Hey, we're working some U substitution integration problems. This particular one is the integration of a fraction. The numerator is 5x to the 4th plus 3x squared. Uh, the denominator is x to the 5th plus x to the 3rd plus 10. This is dx. So uh, we're trying to find a U here because this really doesn't fit any uh, function specific um, formula yet. I mean, it's not a power rule for sure. Um, so looking at it, we're trying to figure out what else it could be. And I kind of noticed that the bottom um, has x to the 5th, x to the 3rd, and the top has x to the 4th, x squared. So it's kind of like maybe the top is the derivative of the bottom. And that may or may not work. Um, but if it does, then it may be a good uh, candidate for um, the natural log integration. But let's see here. I'm going to let the denominator... be u. So u will be x to the fifth plus x cubed plus 10. Ugh. And then we'll take the derivative of that. So du will be 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared dx. And this one was created perfectly for u substitution. So while the bottom is going to be u, the top and the dx are going to be du. So when I rewrite it, it will look like the integration of 1 over u du. So be careful because that's not a power rule integration. <laughs> Excuse me. It is a natural log integration. So 1 over u integrates to the natural log of u. We'll put a plus C. We can put absolute value bars around this if we want. Good question of whether or not we should. Um, but natural log of U plus C. So we're going to go back to what U was, which was uh, X to the fifth plus X cubed plus 10. So natural log of that plus C. So try to make sure everything lines up. Um, everything looks really good there. So while it looks really complicated, it's a fairly simple natural log integration as long as you see the natural log. All right, now some trig problems. We have the integration of x times the cosine of x squared minus 1 dx. So <clears throat> once again, let's try and think about our u's as something usually in parentheses. So we'll try the x squared minus 1 and if that works, u equals x squared minus 1. When we take the derivative, du equals 2x dx, we do to see this single x up here. So there's x dx. So we're going to be able to replace everything, but we do need to make a final adjustment to our du. We'll divide out this 2. So we'll have 1 half du equal to x dx. So let's see what that means for us. We're going to rewrite our... Um, integration as one half cosine of u du. So the u is being replaced is the replacement for x squared minus one, and the one half du is the replacement for the x dx. So um, integrate, the one half is a coefficient, so it'll stay there. So we're on step four, integrate. Uh, the integration of cosine is sine, so it'll be sine of u, and then plus c. So one half sine of u plus c. Um, but we got to go back to whatever u was. So we'll have one half sine of x squared minus one plus c. Okay. And now we are back in terms of x. So if you're having trouble following, we decided our u in the first step. Eventually we work through a du. We substitute to make sure everything was in terms of u. We integrated and then we went back to x. And generally it will not be that concise. The substitution lends itself to being quite lengthy in some places, but in some places we have very nice things to work out.
Another example, the integration of the cosine of x times the sine to the fifth of x, okay, dx. Um, so I put the parentheses in here. Sometimes you may see this statement here, the sine x to the fifth. You may see it with the notation of powers for um, trig functions. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the way I wrote it with the parentheses makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So something is raised to the fifth, so that automatically describes a parentheses. So let's let sine be our u. Okay, so if that's what we do, we'll let u be the sine of x. So our du derivative of the sine is cosine of x dx. So that's going to be a very simple substitution. Okay, we'll replace sine x with u, and we'll replace cosine dx with du. So let's see what this looks like. After doing that, it'll just look simply like um, u to the fifth du. Okay, with something to the fifth. Um, so this is a power rule integration, so no trig really needed in the integration part here. Uh, so this goes up to u to the 6, but we'll divide by the 6. So the integral in terms of u is 1 6 u to the 6. Um, but we'll take it back to x, so that'll be 1 6 sine of x to the 6 plus c. Or if you prefer to put the exponent inside, sine to the 6 x plus c. In all those cases, we're replacing the u with sine. So you can either write it with the x on the outside or the inside as long as you understand what they mean and do it appropriately. Okay, so <clears throat> we picked u, we got du, we rewrote, so now it's all in terms of u. Can't just replace some of the things. Um, and then integrate it and then go back to x. This is my last example. It's integration of cosine over sine squared dx. So let's see here. Um, before, when I had a, the previous one written, I had si uh, ooh, got messy there, didn't it? Let's try again. I had the square outside of the parentheses, and that may help you understand what's going on there. It's not necessary. Um, but if that's the case, in either way, as long as you can determine that sine is being squared, it makes it a great candidate for the u. So if we let u be sine of x, du is cosine of x dx. Sometimes they work out great, sometimes they don't. These examples are working out really good for us. So sine of x is u, cosine x dx is du. So we'll rewrite this as the integration of 1 over u squared du. So let's rewrite that. That'll be an integration of u to the negative 2 du. So in that case, it'll be u. When we integrate, we'll increase the exponent by 1. So u to the negative 1, and then divide by 1. So minus u to the negative 1 plus c. Let's rewrite that and take it back to x at the same time. So it'll be minus 1 over sine of x plus c. So this is my u, my u, my u is on the bottom. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, sine on the bottom is cosecant on top. So if you want to get rid of that, you can write it as negative cosecant plus c. Um, either one of these two is fine. I wouldn't use sine to the negative 1 because then you think maybe you're doing an inverse function. So I definitely stay away from writing it as sine to the negative 1. All right, so some good examples, some good practice. Um, good luck.